We want all of our kids, and so you know what? Not all of our kids are served by our traditional public schools. So we're gonna create a voucher program for our suburban families. You can imagine the uproar that happened when that passed. It was a local option voucher passed by the school board. It's now being challenged in the courts, but it's an amazing program. Wisconsin, after, uh, what's it, so 1995 they passed their bill, it was 2011, they dramatically and finally expanded their voucher program to include higher income and more schools. And the most important ones, I would argue, Indiana and Louisiana. So in 2011, Indiana passed a huge number of school reforms. Uh, I'm sure you all have heard about them and you all know them. But let's talk a little bit how deep those reforms were because they just weren't about school vouchers. Um, this state it dramatically increased its charter school ability, uh, growth uh, potential. They created a state school board, a state school authorizer for charter schools, and they're gonna authorize schools like crazy. Carpe Diem, of which I'm the school board uh, lead, uh, on, um, has six charters. Rocket Ship, which is a blended learning, uh, low-cost school for low-income kids, uh, has 10 charter schools. You're looking at a growth of maybe 50 schools in the next four years, four to five years, all around Indiana. That's what, that's what that's gonna happen there. Then you've got tenure reform, which I'm sure you've all heard about, la ending last in, first out. And the other thing that I think people forget about before we get to vouchers, the most important bit of the reform. So Indiana school funding formula, um, how many understand Indiana school funding formula? Here's your hand. Because if you do, you and the other three people in the state should go get together and figure it out, right? Um, but the reality is, is Indiana school funding formula used to be based on a five-year lag enrollment formula. It's a crazy thing, right? So if my son were to go to uh, school in eighth grade in the traditional public school sector, and then in ninth grade transfer him to a private school, that public school would get money in the old days for, they would get 100% the first year, 80% the second year, 60% the third year, 40% the fourth year, and 20% the fifth year. We changed that in 2009 to say, okay, instead of five years, let's make it three years. So they got, you know, 66% the first, 100% the first year, 66%, 33. In 2011, we eliminated that. It's based only on the prior year. That is dramatically going to change public school budgeting. It has to, right? It ha if, they don't, if they don't figure that they, for a long time, public schools and traditional schools are one of the biggest cash backwards businesses you've ever seen, right? They budget based on the prior year cash flow as opposed to their projected cash flow. And as a result, they've, they've allowed themselves to become really loose with the money and they're gonna have to become much more disciplined. But the biggest thing that happened in Indiana, of course, was the expansion of the tax credit program and the, the passing of the voucher program. Um, let me just do a quick test. John to see how much the information seeps. Um, how many know uh, who's eligible to receive a voucher in the state? Give me, give, someone give me, so, so give me, go ahead, please. What, who's eligible to receive a voucher? I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay, that's one. When you're not included, what are the income limits? Okay, if, and but there's a variable voucher amount, right? So if you're low, free or reduced price lunch, you get a hundred, you get ninety percent. Uh, if you're you're between those two, 150 percent and free and reduced price lunch, you only get fifty percent. And the elementary school voucher is capped at. Everyone knows the money, and that's the way it should be, right? But what happened when they did this, they put a cap on it of 7,500 the first year, 15,000 the second year, unlimited the third year. Here's the marketplace. How many know, how many people in this room know how many students in public schools that applies to, that income limit? Anyone know besides John? Daryl. It's almost, it's 56% it's, it's, it's or 54 to 56% of the entire school age population in the state of Indiana. That's your marketplace. You now have the ability to go get 54 to 56%. This is what, now Louisiana did the same thing. They passed the same type of program, except they had one other criteria. And that was the school, the kids who are coming to the program have to come from schools that are failing, DNF, C DNF schools. The great thing about what they did is it's C DNF schools. If it would have just been DNF schools, that would have been a problem. But CDNS schools really opened the marketplace, and that's about 
or 370,000 kids. Indiana is 540,000 kids will be eligible starting next year. So it's incredible wins that we've had. Now, I know this is a really hard slide to read. I apologize. Don't look at that. You can look over here. All this slide is to tell you we have 21 states in D.C. with 39 voucher programs. It's not just, again, go back to here. The growth in the last two years has been amazing. But that's the whole different. That, there's been growth for the last 15 years since we started as a voucher uh, organization. It's just been tremendous growth. School choice is now in 40% of the states across the country. But what about Indiana? What do we know about the numbers in the first year of Indiana? So in Indiana, there were 3,919 kids that took the program the first year. A little bit of variance on that because of the, the, the reconciling of the numbers. But the prior year public kids were 3,382. The prior year private, i.e. tax credit scholarships, were 537, of which, I think, 530, no, 500 and uh, 460, I'm sorry, came from Indianapolis Public School area. So the vast majority of the scholarship tax credit kids came from the Choice Charitable Trust out of Indianapolis. Uh, total elementary school students were 81%. Total high school students were 19%. The number of public school districts uh, that were sending kids, I mean, look at that number. So you've got 185 out of 294 districts sending one or more kid to a non-public school. You look at uh, 241 private schools were receiving voucher funds at that point. And this year, we've already seen that number increase by 40, well, 38 new schools. So again, let's go back to our marketplace. You now have 38 new schools competing for the same dollars you're going to be competing for. 50 or 60 charter schools starting. Public schools who are now open enrollment all over the place. It's a much different marketplace. If you look at the number, of, but, but the concentration is in the schools, you know, look at losing 50 or more students. There were 16 school districts. The real concentration were of the high number of voucher kids were in a small number of districts. Um, then if you look at the most important bit, bit, bit that 3,382 children that were prior year public would have cost the state $21 million or so to educate. The entire 3,919 cost the state $16 million. Let me rephrase that, cost taxpayers 60 million to spend. Guess who got that 4.1 million? Every other public school in the state got that excess. And charter schools, by the way, they got a VIG on that too. So you're being disadvantaged in the numbers. And if, if, if this will continue as long as the $4,500 cap is there in the program. So, that's the growth in school choice. You've seen your marketplace, you've seen what your customers want, you've seen this incredible growth in school choice and the type of school choice. What's been the impact? Again, I apologize because you guys have seen the impact every day and so I wanna make sure that I, you, I understand that you guys are the leaders, but I wanna show you what I think has been some of the impact. There's been a significant impact in the last few years on student demographics in non-public schools. The trend is to argue and build designs all across the country. Remember, we, we work all across the country. Traditional schools deserve these kids first. They deserve a shot at them. Not everyone, not your current children. They don't deserve a shot. Not the middle income parents who've been working their tails off to be able to afford your school. Just the kids that go to traditional sector schools first. They're the ones who deserve the shot first. Now, I don't know where you come down on that, but I can tell you right now, that this is the trend that is growing in legislators, legislatures across the country. But if you look at the data of all the voucher programs in the country, 12 programs currently allow previous prior or prior, uh, prior year private or public school students. So that means they allow everyone prior year private or public. Seven of those are voucher programs and five of those are tax credit scholarship programs. Uh, uh, 10 programs allow for entering private kindergarten students and then prior year public. The entering kindergarten is really important. It's a trigger, uh, and we know that you, you have a lot of kids coming into the private, private schools in kindergarten, so we try to make sure bills are designed so you have entering kindergartners or prior year public. And five programs generally require previous enrollment in a public school, Indiana and Louisiana being the big ones. We were lucky to be able to get the, the scholarship tax credit exemption last year. We, were, we had to fight very hard. And let's be very clear, who do, we had to, who, did we, who do you think we had to fight to get that? 
No. They always fight us. You're right. I mean, they hate us, right? They hate the idea of parents having more choices. We had to fight people who had for years said they support school vouchers. Republicans in the legislature said, yeah, I'm all for you. But when it came down to it, they really weren't. They all, well, I'm all for you as long as it's only those kids. I'm all for you as long as you don't get them all the money. I'm all for you as long as you do, you do this, this, and this. What this is doing, though, is, is, is when we promote school choice around the country, the natural constituents to help us promote this are you guys and your parents that are in your programs. And yet they're not benefiting. The parents that are currently your schools often nowadays don't get a benefit as much. This is a challenge. This is one of the impacts. What does that mean? It means your student demographics are changing. This is, your current, this is the current private school in America demographics. About 73% are white, 9% uh, are African American, 9% are Hispanic, 6% are Asian or Pacific Islander, and uh, less than 1% are American Indian. Uh, the public schools are, are differ, differ, differ than, different than that, of course. That is the current standard across the, the, this is the Indiana voucher program demographics. So if you look, 85% of the children who took vouchers, free and reduced price lunch. 15% were, were uh, not. 69% come from metropolitan areas. But look at the number of kids from rural and suburban Indiana that want it. There are options there. Here's the most interesting stuff. Indiana schools, public schools, 79% white, 11% African American, 7% Hispanic. Indiana's voucher kids, 47% white, 24% African American, 19% Hispanic. You're more than twice as likely in a voucher program to be an African American than you are at traditional public schools. This is changing the demographics of non-public schools. I think for the better, but it's a challenge and it's an impact and we need to be aware of it. There's some good impact. Now this is early data, I apologize, on test scores. So we know English language arts, the states, 79% pass their English language art, 81%. Non-publics, 91% on average pass their English language arts, and 89% pass math. These are great numbers, right? We love those numbers. Look at the numbers that passed 90% of both non-publics in the state of Indiana. 38% passed non-publics compared to 12%. These are great numbers, you'd think. Wonderful numbers. Look at the, these are some schools in, the, in, in, in this area here. So I picked six schools, I'm trying to, uh, without saying any names. Six school scores combined. Evansville Vandenberg's barely at 70 on both their things, so they're just roughly at 70. We've got a school at 79.8%, 72%, 81%. Look at some of the schools, one down at 54.5%. Okay, this seems okay. You know, barring all this, you're like really good. But here's the problem. Two schools in that, demo, in that set improved their scores. Four lowered their scores. The story right now around the state, no matter how hard we have tried, John and I, to stop it, is non-public school test scores go down. They are not comparing you guys to, any, uh, to Evansville Vandenberg. They're comparing you, to, comparing you to the state average. They're comparing you to 90%. And they're looking at public school test scores rising and non-public school test scores going down. That's the storyline that we're trying to combat right now. The not so good news is this ratio right here probably extends statewide on the non-public schools. There are, there are some challenges. Now again, this isn't being critical. You just have a new set of kids in your school. And we know from all of the data about private schooling is the longer kids are in private schools and exposed to the culture that you guys can offer, the better they're going to be over time. But what's happening is your, so everyone in the sort of grade spectrum is roughly within two grades of each other. So it's middle and then two, two grades up, two grades down. What's happening in the voucher school sector is that all the kids you're getting like in the charter schools are from medium down to down two grades. And you're having to bring them up at a faster pace. Now let's think about the accountability that's required by the Indiana voucher program. You get two years to get those kids to a score level that's not a D or F. And if, if you don't, you lose your ability to, to get new kids in. After year four, you lose the money. This is a more rigorous accountability system than the traditional public school sector. So the impact is, has been generally